Hi everyone, this is the video lesson for 4.2, critical points, local maxima, and local minima. Here's the warm-up. Number one, what is the first derivative test? If you go back to 4.1 for a moment, we talked about increasing and decreasing. And when you go through the first derivative test, you're basically looking for one of two cases. So, let's draw the line in the middle. Divide this into the two different cases. In the first case, if you want to find out when or where is the minimum, first you have to solve for the interval of decrease. If the function is decreasing and it hits a certain point, then the function continues to increase. This means this point must be the minimum. Likewise, if you look at the second case, if you're looking for the maximum, first you must find the interval of increase. If at a certain point the function continues to decrease, this implies that this point must be a maximum. So again, what is the first derivative test? If the function decreases, then continues to increase, then that point is a minimum. Case number two, if the function is increasing, then it starts to decrease, that point must be a maximum. Number two, what are critical points? If we think about critical points, there are three different cases. In most textbooks, they would tell you that a critical point may be a maximum or a minimum. And let's be very clear, when we say maximum, of course, this includes local maximum, uh, absolute maximum, global maximum, relative maximum, and same idea for minimum. But there's a third case. This is also known as the inflection point, or sometimes, depending on the textbook, that we write this as a point of inflection. So again, we're not really doing the points of inflection yet, but I do want to give you a preview in terms of what this looks like. So again, something we do later on in this chapter, the point of inflection. This basically means, for example, if the function contains a maximum and it contains a minimum, or let's say a function contains a minimum and it contains a maximum. The inflection point or the point of inflection is where the function changes the slope. So in the first case, notice how the slope is decreasing. Then it hits the point of inflection. Then the slope changes and starts increasing. Likewise, in the second case, notice the slope, the tangent is increasing, then it hits the point of inflection or the inflection point, and now the function starts to decrease. Now, back to number three. How do we calculate critical points? So, step one, you have to find the derivative. Step two, you set the derivative to zero. And step three, you solve for x. And again, there might be one value of x, maybe multiple values, and those are critical points. And of course, this circles back to number two. Once you find these critical points, it may be a maximum, minimum, sometimes a point of inflection. Let's keep going. Example number one, determine the critical points for each of the following functions and determine whether the function has a local maximum value, a local minimum value, or neither at the critical points. Now I'm beginning with something that's very simple because you've done this back in grade 10, grade 11, and it's y equal to x squared. 
So before I even go through all the steps, I'm making the assumption that you still remember how to graph this. So think about y equals to x squared. You know the function looks something like that. Which means before we do any work, you can tell there's going to be a minimum located at 0, 0. You can also tell the function is decreasing when x is less than 0. The function is increasing when x is greater than 0. Now we can go back and show the steps. So again, step one, to find the critical points, to find the derivative. So if you use the power rule, f prime is going to be 2x. Step two, set this to be 0. Step three, once you set this to 0 and you solve for x, x equals to 0. Now, really important that you form the habit of solving for the location of this critical point. So you're not looking for the x value, you're looking for the point. Now, I hope you still remember some of your mental math skills. If you plug x to be 0, 0 squared will be 0. So the corresponding y value is going to be 0. And this is going to be a critical point. Now, if you want to know the intervals of increase and decrease, you can compose a table. The first column is IOI, which stands for the interval of increase. In the second column, IOD, the interval of decrease. So again, to find the interval of increase, you set the first derivative to be greater than 0. In this case, 2x is going to be greater than 0, which means x is going to be greater than 0. Once you've practiced enough, you can tell directly that the interval of decrease is when x is negative. But just in case you're still practicing and you want to show other steps, start with the fact that f prime is going to be negative, which means in this case, 2x is going to be negative, then x is going to be less than 0. Now here comes the most important summary. Since f prime changes from negative to positive, therefore this critical point, 0, 0 is a minimum. And again, this is an agreement with the warm-up, it's an agreement with the diagram that we drew before we even started the entire question, right? Okay. Let's keep going. 1b. f of x equals to x to the power of 3. Now again, the first step is you can draw a diagram, or at least you can imagine one before we start. I'm assuming you still remember how to graph y equal to x to the power of 3. So, if you sketch this, y equals to x to the power of 3 looks something like this. And again, if you really look at this, the function is increasing from left to right with the exception of the origin, which we'll get to. And uh, it's an odd function, as you can tell. And there is a critical point, which will turn out to be a point of inflection, as you'll see. So again, here are the actual steps. Find the derivative. When you go through the power rule, the derivative of x cubed is going to be 3x squared. When you set this to 0, you can solve for x. Now again, ideally, there are two values for x because the exponent is going to be 2. The opposite of multiplying by 3 is to divide by 3. The opposite of taking the square is to take the square root of both sides. But of course, 0 is the only number 
that is not positive and not negative. So x turns out to be 0, which is technically 0, 0, because it's just repeated. Again, really important that you find the location and not just the x value. So back to your mental math skills. If you plug x to be 0, the corresponding y value is going to be 0 as well. So the critical point is located at 0, 0, which we knew from the diagram. So just based on the first step, drawing a diagram, this is an agreement. Now, if you think about the two cases, interval of increase and the interval of decrease, again, IOI, IOD, here's the first case. The first derivative must be positive. So 3x squared must be positive. And again, I hope you see the pattern by now that you can divide both sides by 3, x squared is positive, and this is true as long as x is a real number with one exception. So again, I'm going to give you two ways of answering this because some students like to write down x as an element of real numbers, whereas x cannot be 0, or another student is going to say, no, I need to write down x is less than 0, x is greater than 0, and either answer is fine. I'm flexible, you pick the one that makes sense for you. Now, if you move on to the second column again, for the interval of decrease, the derivative must be negative. 3x squared must be negative, x squared must be negative, and you can tell this is not possible. No matter what x value you select, once you square it, it's going to be positive. Even if you pick x to be 0 and you square it, it will be 0, but 0 cannot be less than 0. So essentially, there's no solutions to this. Now, here's the second summary. Since f prime of x changes from positive to positive, Therefore, this point, the critical point, 0, 0, is going to be an inflection point. So before we keep going, you can tell that there are four cases when you go through the first derivative test. And I'll say this. You can write this down on your own. You can even press pause, write it down, and press play. I'll be right here. So the four cases includes, if it's going to be an inflection point, f prime will change from positive to positive. If the function, again, contains a point of inflection, it may also change from negative to negative. If you go back to 1a, if there's a minimum, the function will change from negative to positive. And of course, the last case, the function contains a maximum if it changes from positive to negative. So, part c, f of x equals to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x. Now, I would like you to try this. And once you press pause and you try this, you can press play. I'll be right here and I'll continue. In fact, I'm going to stop this video. When you try this and you want to watch and you want to keep going, watch the second part of this video. See you soon. And I hope this makes sense.